Hello everybody from Porte Natalis, Chile. Um, I wanted to be there with you, but I did give it some thought. Um, I'm a couple days drive to the airport, another day or two um, away, given the flight time uh, and a lot of money, um, only to have to come back and repeat the process in two or three weeks. And I know Teresa wouldn't want me to spend the money on her service any more than I would want her to spend that money on mine. Uh, so given all that, I decided to do this video um, at her service. And I did prepare a eulogy or speech or whatever you want to call it. So I will be reading um, off of it here. Um, I did that because... A, I still in, like I'm sure a lot of you are still in shock um, and I've got brain fog going on and I couldn't keep my thoughts organized enough to say all the things that I feel like needed to be said uh, about Teresa. So with that, I'm going to start and I'm not going to redo this. So if there's pauses or breaks or awkward moments in the video, I apologize and just bear with me uh, and we'll get through this. If I were to summarize Teresa's life, it would go something like this. Mother, daughter, wife, and sister. Teresa spent the vast majority of her short 56 years taking care of a small circle of people she loved deeply. The only real devotion and passion she ever experienced was her family. There was no career, no significant outside interest or endeavors. Her entire life's effort and achievements all centered around her daughters, her mother, her husband, and her siblings. Most people would say in that regard, she got it right. The truth is, Teresa got it right most of the time and excelled in many ways. But she also failed in some important ways, just like the rest of us here today have. And unless we're extremely lucky, we all will fall short again in the future. I believe Teresa would want me to talk about her failures first, so I will. First and foremost, I know Teresa did not realize the permanent scar she would leave on the two most important people in her life, Christina and Samantha. A sober-minded Teresa would have known, but her final moments were not rational nor sober. When people leave the world by their own hand, it is erroneously said to be a selfish act. That's not correct. In fact, the reality is it's almost always an ignorant act, something that they would not do again if given the chance. But some things in life are not undoable or fixable. And this is certainly one of those undoable things, so we're all left to deal with it as it is. But do know and remind yourself over and over again that Teresa made her decision with a completely numbed state of mind, and her life ended on what she would call the biggest unintentional regret of her life, leaving Christina and Samantha to figure it out. One day, girls, likely when you are much older, you will know your mom did not hurt you intentionally, and you will know she loved you both more than anything in the world. Secondly, I think Teresa would want to admit she failed the people she loved when she was drinking excessively. Everyone in the room today could name more than a few times that this was true. Teresa knew she made her worst decisions when she drank too much, as anyone that has a problem with alcohol does. Teresa and I had the least amount of conflict out of a family filled with emotional nutbags. <laughs> but we really only had one major blow up over her boyfriend. Upon meeting him, I told her he was a complete zero and to spin the wheel again, so to speak. I was an asshole to him. I didn't like him. It was real clear on the two occasions that I met with him. But Teresa had an emotional investment at the time and did what most people would do and that was to take a fast and firm defensive position. The only real time I felt like there was a wedge between, between us. But nonetheless, we were arguably the closest among the siblings. In addition, 
living away and not so close to the fire gave me a broader view of my sister and the life that she lived. I'll rattle off some of the good things now that I knew about Teresa. She loved her daughters and she loved doing and giving them things that made them happy. How do I know that? Teresa and I had hours of conversations in her kitchen when I would visit with coffee. And I believe she would want me to talk about a conversation we had about Christina today. There was a big fight. I can't remember the details, but it was pretty big. And when I defended Christina, you know, and was talking about how young she was, I asked Teresa what she wanted. And she said she wanted the same thing that Christina wants for Oliver, and that is to have a happy life. And it shut me up immediately. It was such a profound thing to say. I walked away understanding that truly wanting somebody to have a happy life is the epitome of loving somebody. During another visit, many years ago, we were talking about Samantha when she was in elementary school and how it was being an older parent. Teresa laughed and said Samantha asked her to wear makeup when she came to school to get her. Little kids will tell you the truth, she joked. I thought it was hysterically funny at the time, but I also wondered if that hurt being an older parent. I asked Teresa what she said to see if she was hurt by the, the comment. And she said, plain as day, I put on makeup, of course. She could see it from her little girl's perspective and was more than happy to do it to make her daughter happy. I was blown away by how mature that was at first and then realized it wasn't really being mature. It was what a mother would do. Teresa was a great cook. We were good at things we enjoyed doing and I think Teresa was a great cook because she enjoyed enjoyed giving people ridiculously big and elaborate meals. The actual cooking and even more so the massive cleanup is a pain in the ass as we all know. But I believe Teresa made meals for everyone as a way to express her love for them. She got almost, she got up almost every morning to fix breakfast and pack a lunch for her kids over the span of 25 years. Teresa was great with her whole, she was great with money her whole life, better than anybody in her family. Um, even when Rod and her had plenty to spend, she was thrifty and responsible, just as her parents were when she was growing up, and hopefully that's a trait her daughters have picked up. God knows she was the only kid in the family that did. She loved the holidays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, 4th of July, it didn't matter. She went out all the way every year for almost 25 years. She was a hard worker, both at home and at any job she ever had. She put her heart and soul in almost every task she took on, again, almost to a fault. She was an absolutely stunning bride at just 19 years old. She was also one of those women that glowed when she was pregnant. She didn't smoke or drink through both of her pregnancies because she knew it wasn't good for her babies. Teresa was funny and could laugh at herself, sometimes easier than she would laugh at somebody else. She was also hard on herself to a fault. She admitted that Rod was a great provider and committed to his family, even when she gave him so many reasons not to be. That was at the height of their divorce. Teresa was better than she got credit for at admitting her faults and shortcomings in private, which is something most of us have a hard time doing. She always took at least some responsibility for the problem in our many discussions anyway. She was a very gracious host to anyone that stayed in her house. She was smarter than she got credit for being and even more than she realized, I think. Although I think Teresa would admit that the girls got most of their smarts from their father and their beauty from her mother. Rod would probably agree just as anybody that knows him would. <laughs> but she could research the hell out of anything online when she put her mind to it and walked away with an impressive understanding of what she'd read. Teresa was active even in her latest years and never got a size or two bigger than she was in high school her entire life, which is not an easy thing to do. I think she did it a little out of vanity, 
but as well as her exceptional understanding about nutrition and health. But I will say and end with what I think is the most special thing about my little sister. If you haven't yet, when you're sitting with yourself quietly and you ask yourself, would Teresa still be here had I been a better husband, a better mother, a better brother or sister? The emotional nutbag in Teresa would tell you to stop it and that she loves you and forgives you. Just as we much say to her, Teresa, mom, wife, daughter, and sister, I love you. I will miss you. And I really do forgive you. Rest in peace, sweet sister. And tell dad, Tommy, and grandma, hello for me. A big hug, a big hug to everyone. And I love you all. I hope you find Comfort and peace, and remember the many positive experiences you had with Teresa. And I'll probably, I'll come home as soon as I get back. Uh, it will probably be around the first or second week in March uh, when I get to Tennessee um, to, to be with you all and, and um, see everybody. So with that, I've got to pack up now, um, taking a ferry. Uh, I'm gonna be on a boat for the next four days, um, going up the, the coast of Chile, um, and then off to Buenos Aires from that. So I'll, I'll, I'll be out of pocket uh, after, after today, um, but I'll be online um, probably on Saturday or in five days from now. Take care, I love you all and um, I look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.